clear? So is the structure here clear? Okay. So why was it that I kept you in? Why why was it that I said that you were in separate cells? Yeah, because if you communicate with each other, then you change the outcome. Okay. So if you could communicate, so you're in one cell, and I'm your former partner. Uh, and now somehow you're able to communicate, what are you going to say to me? So you're going to say to me, I just took this class in philosophy and I learned about the prisoner's dilemma and here's the structure of the choices that we face. And, and go ahead, and what are you going to say about this? Well, obviously I'm actually trying to say that uh, we should both be silent and not confess. Yeah, you're going to say, look, if we both confess on each other, if we both rat out each other, we're going to wind up pretty badly off. You could maybe point out that you would do better. But more importantly, you would say to me, I would do better. Right. So, okay, so I scratch my head and I say, yeah, I see that. It makes sense. I would do better if both of us remain silent than if both of us confess. And we, what? shake hands and pinky swear and then go off into our own court date and what's it going to be rational for you to do now? You have convinced me as best you can to choose this column. And what choice now are you going to make? You're going to confess. Because if you think I'm going to be silent, well, here's your choice. And of course, off in my courtroom away from you, I'm going to think that you're going to be silent maybe if you made a good case, and I'm going to choose to confess and it move back here again. So as long as the choice actually is independent of the other, right, as long as the choice actually is uh, uh, made separately, it doesn't really matter that we were held in separate cells. Right? Communication and describing the situation really doesn't make a, make a difference. So this was just a rhetorical flourish. On the other hand, uh, it is crucial that you not care about your partner. It is crucial that I said this is a, a partnership of convenience only. It is crucial that you not care about your reputation after you get out of prison. Okay, so why is that? Why is it important that you not care about your partner? Yeah, it makes it easier to just make a purely rational decision. Well, it makes it easier, but what what would be different if you cared about your partner? You wouldn't want them to be in jail for 18 years. Yeah, so look, I mean, when you're going, if your partner's going to be silent here, and you only care about yourself, you only look at the five to three, and it's easy. On the other hand, if you cared about your partner, if your partner was your mother, for example, you might care about going from five to three, but you might also care about sending her away for 20 instead of five, or 18 instead of three. So it is crucial, it does matter, that you are only concerned with the left hand number here. You're only concerned with the satisfaction of your own desires, as it were. Okay, other questions about this the structure? Okay, so um, just as keeping you in separate cells was not essential to the, to the logic of the structure, the specific story about bank robbery and the specific length of prison terms doesn't matter either. The idea of a prisoner's dilemma generalizes to this. So a prison, in fact, a prisoner's dilemma is an abstract mathematical structure where two people, or maybe more, face two choices and the order of their preferences are like this. So you see that the exact length of the prison term doesn't matter. What matters is that this is like first best, second best, third best, and fourth best outcome for row and column. Same structure as before. Okay, so for you, row, you're choosing between A and B. 
column is choosing between A and B. And you row your preferences are in the left side of each of these um, coordinates. So your second best goes to your first best. And so you're driven, if you think that your partner is going to choose A, then you are driven to B. Because first best is better than second best. And if your partner is choosing, you think your partner is choosing B, fourth to third, you're driven to choose B also. And similarly, second to first, fourth to third, your partner is going to choose B. Each of you wind up with your third best instead of your second. So this is a generalized, more abstract version of the same logical structure. Is that clear? Okay, so when people talk about a prisoner's dilemma, this is what they're talking about. Last chance for questions. Okay, so we're going to run an experiment now. You need to choose a partner. A partner of convenience, not somebody that you are going to care about after you know, this class.
you're going to choose this row or this row. Your partner, you don't have to worry about your partner's score, but your partner you should think of as choosing this column or this column. And then you can see what your score is for the combination of your choice and your partner's choice. So let's just quickly verify that this is a prisoner's dilemma. Oh, sorry, I, should, I need to say that. You're trying to get a high score. You're trying to get points, not your, so in the example I gave, you're trying to get a low prison term. Here, you're trying to get as many points as you can. So. Suppose you choose to cooperate and your partner chooses to cooperate, you get down, you write down six points. If you choose to betray and your partner cooperate, you get ten points, which would be better. So if you think that your partner is going to cooperate, choose to betray. If you think your partner is going to betray, one or three, you should betray. Three is more than one. Okay? So here's the scoring. Any questions about the scoring? Your partner, you don't have to worry about. She or he is going to be scoring also. Uh, and I say one more time that you need to do this one play at a time. OK, a couple more points before we move on. Um, the first is this. Let's think about a little bit about strategy. Let's think about how you're going to approach this a little bit. Suppose you decide to betray every single time. Actually, I, I, I need to specify a little bit more, more precisely what you're trying to do. You're trying to get as high a score as possible. In particular, you're trying to get a higher score than everyone else in the class. Not just higher than your partner. If you were trying to get a higher score than your partner, what would the strategy be? There is a, there is a strategy here that's guaranteed not to get lower than your partner and possibly get higher than your partner. What's that strategy? Hmm? Keep betraying. Because if you betray every time for 20 times in a row, you'll either be here or here. Here, you get more than your partner. Here, you get the same as your partner. There's no way you can get less than your partner. But if you adopt that strategy, betray every time, you might think, well, you're going to beat your, your partner, or at least not lose to your partner. But your partner's probably going to catch on. Your partner's not going to like this one very much. And so your partner is probably going to start betraying you. And I don't know, maybe it takes her three tries to realize this, and for the next 17, you're going to be getting threes, while someone else in the class might be getting tens or sixes. So it's important that you try to get as high a score as possible, not just more than your partner. So this is four grades before the trade school. You are choosing this row or this row. Oh, so it doesn't really matter. So That's it. Okay. If you're, you're cooperating or betraying your partner, obviously. Okay, so maybe you think that, because of what I just said, maybe you think that betrayal every time is not such a great strategy. In particular, somebody else in the class might be beating. So how would this work? I mean, so maybe the thing to do is to lull your partner into thinking that you're going to cooperate.